Hi guys, we're back today with another video, it being a Sunday. Today is our more serious day for uploads, Wednesday being our more fun one. Mm -hmm. And in that one we have got a list of your suggestions which we'll cover there and then. But for this one we're going to talk about Charlotte's history with anxiety and how she changed so much from the very anxious young girl she once was to the amazingly inspirational confident girl she came after that diagnosis two and a half years ago. Yeah, so I think what I'd like to say, it's uh, just because we're doing the videos doesn't mean that it hasn't been a difficult week. It's been a very, very tricky week and um, we did the ashes on Tuesday, but um, we've done those, so it's nice because there's somewhere to go back to to visit her. Um, anyway, on to anxiety disorder. I think the first thing that I want to say, because I think some of the comments, you know, it sort of said as a parent, I think as a parent, you need to accept that your child has a disorder if you want. Anxiety is a disorder, and unless you accept that, you won't get anywhere because you need to be able to then work with the child to work through it and the anxiety, and to be honest, to be able to fight for the child because otherwise you haven't got anything. So Charlotte started her anxiety disorder when she was about seven. And Miles will probably remember this very well. Charlotte came home and uh, she was very upset one evening. And we said, what happened? And she said, oh, I only got two out of 20 in the maths test. So I said, well, you know, it's, don't worry about it too much. And she said that to the, one of the boys on her table said, what did you get? So she said, well, I got two out of 20. He then immediately said, oh, Charlotte only got two out of 20 on her maths test. And to this day, in fact, recently before she died, she said, I'll never forget him saying that because I couldn't say that to anybody to start taking the mickey. I'd actually say, well, I'd help you. And I think miles later, you actually, you found the young man on the playground a bit later. <laughs> I think said that, uh, do you remember doing that? I think so. I yeah. just had a word, I think. You had a quiet word with him saying, back off my sister. Um, she had a huge anxiety disorder. Um, going back for many, many years, and in fact, even when she was 16, she was still under CAMS with child and adolescent mental health service for counselling. Um, can you remember her a bit when she was younger, at school? You had a her quite a bit at primary school, I think, didn't you? Yeah, because she had a history of being bullied at primary school. Um, yeah, and also being sick, and sick, you know, that she had... Uh, always stomach aches and stuff and so she couldn't quite get to school. We saw, I sort of cottoned on to that eventually and I, I could see what was going on there and I think you need to work with the school. Um, I had my ups and downs with her primary school, I'll be honest, and um, some of them I did, I did find it quite difficult to deal with but I persevered with it. I'm really sorry, I'm going to actually have to read some bits off um, my piece of paper. Uh, so it was about age seven that she had a really low self-esteem and aged about nine I was really becoming quite concerned about bullying because she kept having sore throats, abdominal pain, she was regressing like anything academically. Uh, that's when CAM set in and in fact we saw a neurological psychiatrist who said that she already had a major anxiety disorder and query dyspraxia. So basically I think through her childhood she had a deterioration in performance which was to do with stress and ongoing with friendship issues leading to this huge anxiety disorder. And that anxiety disorder she never ever got over until the cancer. And in fact, we were talking about this the other day, weren't mm. we? Saying that, well, it was that you that said it to me, wasn't it? About if she hadn't had cancer, what would we have been left with? Yeah, I mean, everyone knows um, that Charlotte put more life into two and a half, three years than most people do mm. in 50. And I think had that diagnosis not been made and that massive mental shift hadn't occurred, then I think she probably would have had a terrible quality of life. Yes. I think she yeah. would have been an absolute nervous wreck. I don't think she would ever be able to get a job. I mean, before mm. she got into college, just before her diagnosis, you were having to teach her just how to get onto the bus and the trains on her own. So Yeah, that, that summer good. in 2013, that was going to be spent when she finished uh, school, actually going on the buses and trains with her because her college was going to be seven or eight miles away. Obviously, that never happened because she got diagnosed with cancer. And uh, she had to grow up very, very fast indeed. 
So as I said at the beginning, I think as a parent, you must recognise that your child has a disorder. If, if you don't do that, it's absolutely hopeless and it, it's not fair on the child apart from anything else. So that would be my... Having, having seen what Charlotte was like, it seems, it seems incredibly difficult to believe that people do so outwardly deny mental illness. Yes. If mental illness didn't work, then why would drugs alter the brain chemistry and get people living better lives. Mm. And what we always said is mental illness is far, far worse. If, you know, if you physical illness, people can see it. Mental illness, nobody can. Okay, so what we will... Uh, we'll do a fun one during the week on Wednesday. Um, I'm sorry if these seem a bit short, but we don't want to do a sort of do a sort of 15 minute one. Um, we'd rather sort of keep them a little bit shorter, I suppose. Um, we will be talking more about anxiety and certainly secondary school and the effect that that had mm. on Charlotte and that had a huge effect. Um, I suppose what we'll probably do is have this first instalment, if you like, about primary, the second about secondary and the third about the changes after the diagnosis in terms of anxiety. Yes, um, obviously, you know, if people have got any questions, you know, do put them yeah. in the boxes below because um, we lived with... Uh, with Charlotte's anxiety disorder for many years, so there's quite a bit we, well, I suppose mm -hmm. we know about. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, Wednesday we've got a couple of things which people have asked us to do, and uh, we're going to do those on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you on Wednesday, guys. Thank you for watching, and hopefully this has been informative. And if there are, is anyone out there with anxiety disorder or feeling like they may be struggling with non-diagnosed anxiety disorder, it's very important that you try and seek the right help for that and you keep on fighting to get it recognised. Absolutely. Okay. Bye Thank bye. You. Bye.